Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, people may have often heard me say that in Queensland we have the toughest, strongest, most comprehensive anti-organised crime legislation in the nation. And with our recent decision to support Task Force Maxima becoming a permanent unit within the Queensland Police Service, with extra resources for our police, and of course these tough, strong, comprehensive laws, we see today some news that that work is paying dividends. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the work of Superintendent Roger Lowe and his team at the Organised Crime Gangs Group, as well as also other police officers who were involved in the closure of a very significant operation today. An operation which shows that we continue to keep the force, the pressure on outlaw motorcycle gangs and for that matter all people involved in organised crime in this, in this state. Uh, Roger will provide some extra information in a couple of moments, but it is that this decision to be relentless when it comes to tackling organised crime in our state, which is leading to dividends and contributing to a safer community. This is something which we don't apologise for. We will continue to work hard to ensure that we keep the pressure up on organised crime participants to ensure that we can continue to contribute to community safety here in our state. Roger. Yeah, thank you, Minister. Yes, last night the teams from Organised Crime Gangs Group, Task Force Maxima, along with the North Brisbane District Police, executed a warrant. The warrant was new powers under the Serious and Organised Crime Amendments, and it's a search that allows us to enter premises to seize prohibited items that we believe are being used for disorderly conduct by criminal organisations. So last night at Launton, uh, we executed the search warrant. Uh, ten persons were detained. Nine of those persons are known members of the Rebels Motorcycle Gang, and nine of those persons were giving official consorting warning, warning notices. From that search, we seized from the premises prohibited items that give us rise to suspicion this premise was being used by these persons as an emerging clubhouse for OMCG, namely the Rebels Brisbane chapter. We seized pool table, a significant amount of liquor, prices of liquor, tick sheets, rebels paraphernalia, a rebels flag, along with music equipment and band equipment that we believe is part of the disorderly conduct uh, and entertainment and behaviour within that premises by the rebels as an emerging clubhouse. That property is now seized and we'll retain that as part of our disruption tactics to gangs that may suggest that they can establish premises and frequent those premises. So nine of those persons last night were Rebels members, the tenth person being a son of a member. The nine persons were given consorting warning notices. They were also issued public safety orders. This is the first time we've used this legislation in Queensland and it's an order to these nine persons that as a Commission Officer I believe they're at risk of serious risk to public safety and security, being recognised offenders, associates of recognised offenders and parts of criminal organisations. It's in order to these people that they can't enter, remain or return at the nominated premises. So the authority of the search warrant was the first time we've used that legislation last night uh, and it's very effective for us uh, in dismantling this premises, removing equipment which they, ca which they can't use in the future and denying these people to enter remain and denying these people to undertake their activities of what we believe is a clubhouse of OMCGs. Um, just before taking questions, I, I just wanted to emphasise the point that Roger made in his remarks. So this is the first time that these new laws have been used by the Queensland Police Service. These new laws, which were brought in by the Palaszczuk Government, which, as I say, are the strongest, toughest, most comprehensive laws in the nation and they're designed to disrupt organised crime activity and we see last night that coming into action. Disruption of organised criminal activity, disruption of an emerging clubhouse and people who are involved in organised crime being held to account. Um, Roger's team needs to be commended for their hard work and I know Roger's team will be relentless in their continued pursuit of those people involved in organised crime. Any questions? Hey, Josh. <laughs> um, playing pool and live music is not organised crime activity. So why are we led to believe that these are new kinds of items, including allegedly from the 
Thank you. This is a stroke of clay and mini festival in Tree Hills, sponsored by the local council today. Why? Uh, why? Why do you say this is a structural mm. yeah. So well, Roger will be able to answer that. I think if you look through the history of OMCGs and their conduct within clubhouses, you'll acknowledge and recognise that they've used these premises to meet, to plan and organise criminal activities, criminal rides, and expand their criminal networks. The notion that they are going to meet with these clubhouses without police response would then serve only for them to uh, carry on their business of being a criminal organisation, the Rebels Motorcycle Gang. They're not meeting there as social activities. They are not social bike riders. They are members of a 1% recognised criminal organisation, namely the Rebels. Nine out of those ten persons last night detained in part of the search warrant were members of the Rebels Club. The music equipment that we seized was being used before our arrival as part of entertainment within their event last night. It may well be used for other events. It's music entertainment. But the message is, don't establish a venue where you're going to attract people. Don't establish a venue that uh, is a clubhouse. And the message is, uh, we won't tolerate them recruiting uh, and making these places uh, available for persons to join or expand criminal organisations. None. So if the rebels were to establish themselves at a private residence and undertake the same activities, whether it be habitually consorting or undertaking a premise that we believe uh, is entertaining disorderly conduct, uh, we will take the same action. And as I explained to the members there last night, who were the rebels, I explained to them that if they're going to meet at another premise or they're going to meet at a private residence, uh, we will be there. We will not stop. We will be relentless in dismantling their organisation. So they got a clear message last night that the public safety orders uh, prevent them from coming back to that premise. If they choose to go to another premise and, and undertake the same activities, we will use those powers again. We will use the search warrant powers to seize prohibited items. So those items that, that have been seized are no longer available to them to undertake disorderly conduct in their premises. The consorting warnings, uh, there's over 800 consorting warnings issued now across Queensland. As I explained to these members last night, we are overt, we are transparent, we are clear in our intent. You have been given a warning. Don't habitually consort with recognised offenders. You will be prosecuted. As I said to them last night, it's a shot across their bow. If they don't change their behaviours and don't stop consorting and looking to establish a clubhouse, there are serious ramifications for them in terms of prosecution and even control orders within the court. But all those nine people in these criminal histories who would be, you know, under the law forbidden from habitually meeting consort? No. So a person doesn't need to be a recognised offender to habitually consort. If you consort with two recognised offenders on two occasions, you can be charged. Now, our intelligence and investigations has proven in the last number of weeks there have been a number of recognised offenders frequenting this premises. A premises, I might add, is adjacent to a school, adjacent to a childcare facility that runs at night, uh, and adjacent to residential areas. I'm sure if you ask the people that live in that environment, they don't want a bikey clubhouse being established in their area. And this warrant gave us the power to enter and seize, dismantle and deny. That's the message. How confident are you by doing this that you could stop these criminal activities? Absolutely. And if they don't get the message, um, for the Rebels Clubhouse, uh, wherever it may try to establish again, we'll be back. Uh, and additionally, we will be tracking and using intelligence to look at if any other clubs want to establish like style of premises. So we don't have the overt clubs operating in Queensland. Uh, and where we get intelligence of the emergence of new premises, um, we will use the legislation to take search warrants out to recover prohibited items uh, and stop the behaviour before it manifests itself into that overt criminal activity um, and bear in mind these clubhouses have attracted violence on many occasions across Australia from other clubs and within their clubs themselves. We still see that occurring uh, and that's not something uh,
we would tolerate in a residential area uh, next to a school, childcare or anywhere. Uh, if, for example, the band equipment for the sound would actually belong to that summer term, remember, the teenage and uh, teenager, um, and uh, you know, his, his, his involvement in being at that venue is then just in using that equipment, playing that there, is there any scope for him to, um, for that, that, those items to be returned to him, or is, are all those items you're saying now no longer fit available to anybody who is connected with that venue? Those items have been seized under the warrant as prohibited items. Uh, it's a matter for the legal advice of those persons that it's been seized from um, if they wish to pursue their return. There's an avenue for them to return it uh, and we explain to them they should seek legal advice. But the message to, that, to those members are, if you're a member of a criminal organisation and you elect to involve your family in OMCG events and have them entertained, uh, well, you run the risk. That was a choice made to use that equipment at that venue and the risk they run was forfeiture uh, and seizure and that's been the case. So whether it is a family member or not, it's irrelevant. The choices were made long before. Were there any more complaints regarding this before they made by Sound Rescue? No, there's been no noise complaints but we have received intelligence of the activities there, yes, and, and information from members of the public. Uh, that venue has advertised on Facebook um, for attendance, uh, open events for people to come along and be entertained at that venue. This is a venue that's registered as a garage, uh, not an entertainment venue, not a licensed premises. There are no li liquor license premises issued uh, and there is no um, liquor permits issued to that premises. Yes, sir. Well, this matter with Ta Tayali Palmer is obviously a tragedy on so many levels and um, thank goodness um, justice has been served in this matter. Um, Rick Thorburn will be treated like any other prisoner that is in the custody of Queensland Corrective Services, um, any other prisoner, and he will be required to do the time for his crime. Are you woken up Rick Palmer? He will be treated like every other prisoner in Corrective Services. The man did a very evil thing and he will be treated like every other prisoner. Um, any other questions? Oh, Brent, did we have something to show? Or? Oh, it's been sent. Okay, thanks everyone.